Okay, in this video, we're going to look at grappling a little more, all right? Uh, and again, this is going to be in a sort of a, a lecture, like a lecture type form. Uh, this thing is probably in my way. Um, usually, again, when I, I will tell you that when you see me laptop in front of me, I'm working on a, a project uh, with, um, with some partners uh, concerning IQ and the relationship between self-esteem and IQ. Uh, so I usually multitask, uh, and on my new channel, I'll tell you a little bit about that. In fact, probably on this channel, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, this particular project I'm working on and that... Um, and why that uh, why that is so important to me this particular project okay so uh, just speaking off the top of my head I'm gonna be talking about grappling okay I'm gonna use a prison a uh, a prison assassination um, uh, uh, method okay to point out grappling to you and why my what my issue is with grappling now <clears throat> let me jump into this People have heard me talk about BJJ, okay, about BJJ. All right, now, uh, the reason why I talk about BJJ in the way that I do is because it has been sold as a complete martial art. You don't hear wrestlers say that wrestling is the only martial art you need. You didn't hear judo guys, judoka, say that judo was the only martial art you need. My issue with BJJ is because I've never seen a publicity machine built around this myth that you should lay on your behind and fight, that this is the way you win, that going for a submission is the way you win. And I've said in other videos that the narrative of the martial arts community in the world, unfortunately, are white people who have money who don't fight. White people who have money who don't fight in America. They have the biggest mouths, they do all the talking, and they don't know shit about fighting. The, I'm not saying all of them don't, but the majority as a group, white, wealthy people in America know virtually nothing about fighting. White people in the UK and in Europe in general know quite a bit about fighting and I consider them to be more my peers than any other group. So this is not a race issue. I just want to put that in there. So this is why I talk about BJJ. Grappling itself, to say that grappling, this kind of moving in and your attempt to be that close with an individual rather than get them off of you or to get them down to the ground or to use them as a shield when someone else is attacking you, but to ultimately engage in grappling as a form of self-defense, and that is all you're thinking about is dangerous, and it can cause you your life, and I speak out against that. It should be about 40% of your training. Grappling, what is considered grappling, should be about 40% of your training if you're serious about self-defense. It should not be what too many BJJ artists talk about, which is your ultimate or your go-to or your default way of thinking when it comes down to self-defense. That's my point. And again, why do I go at BJJ? Because you do not hear the nonsense that they say from wrestlers. You do not hear the crap that they say from judo practitioners. Okay? And this is why. All right? I want to give you the scientific reason here from my observation, from my almost 50 years, I'm 58 years old, started training when I was nine. Almost 50 years of training. Very few people on YouTube can say it. Very few. Very, very few. Okay? So I'm up there. That's right. I don't feel bad at all or feel arrogant at all for telling the truth. I'm up there in knowledge and there's very few who have as much. So I'm going to talk about this idea of grappling and compare it to striking. But first I want to talk about uh, a prison, assassinations in prison. Well, there are different ways of killing people in prison. <clears throat> and one way is this. The individual is marked for assassination. Now, 
the person that is being marked um, has, uh, uh, can handle himself. He's a dangerous individual. So on the average, you don't want to go after him one-on-one. -on -one. You need some kind of decoy. So one method that is used is this. You get someone to start a fight with him, preferably the cell over, in one cell over. But certainly someone who he is going to see, and he is going to see that individual and want to engage that individual in a fight, right, in a place where corrections officers have to get to but are not necessarily there, right? Uh, their presence is not necessarily there, right, in numbers in which they can stop that altercation. Okay, again, let me repeat this because I want you to understand where I'm going with this. One way to assassinate someone in prison, or they assassinate people in prison, who is, can handle himself, he's a, he's a tough individual, tough hombre, right, uh, <clears throat> is to set up a decoy. And this is preferably someone who will start a fight with him or an argument with him, right, in the cell over. But certainly, if not in the cell over, certainly somewhere where uh, that person can lo be, lo be located and there will be some kind of altercation and there are not many corrections officers there, right, at that particular site. Now, what happens is, is that when the individual who is marked for assassination sees the person he has that beef with, he immediately goes towards him and engages. When he engages though, he throws a couple punches, but the person who is the decoy grabs him, grabs him. The man who is the mark who is going to be, who is going to be assassinated, he naturally starts to wrestle. He thinks that he is grappling, but really the decoy is holding him in place for the assassin to come up behind him and start stabbing him, okay, and ultimately killing him. So I'm going to repeat this again. There is a method of assassination that they use in prison and have for many, time, for many years. When an individual is extremely tough and you do not want to send one individual against him, you set up a beef with him and another individual. The individual is a decoy, okay? That decoy engages the assassins, the assassination mark, the mark, the man who's going to be assassinated, engages him. The mark engages the guy in the grappling match, right? He thinks he's grappling, but the decoy is actually holding him in place. While the other guy, the real assassin, comes up in back of him and kills him, stabs him, stabs him up. Does work. And therein lies my point. The reality is this. Striking is different than grappling. It is different than grappling. When you are striking, there is periodical contact. There's periodical contact. You can strike, elbow, punches, knees, whatever, kicks. And you can back off and look at your surroundings. Grappling calls for perpetual, perpetual contact. This is constant contact. Now, if you want to test this, think about if you were training in a school where they have grappling and they have striking. When you are training and you're striking on the floor and there are other people peered off and they're striking, can you or can you not look around and see, kind of glance at what people are doing? Well, you can. You can constantly, you can look around periodically and glance. You have to step back but so you don't get knocked out, but you can look around and you can see what other people are doing. When you are rolling, if your head is back, you might see something. If you're to the side and you're kind of in a stalemate, you might see something. But ultimately, when you are grappling, you are not always cognizant of what other people are doing on the mat. And that is because grappling in and of itself in and of itself, is perpetual contact 
And that calls for a concentration that you don't necessarily need all the time when you are striking. So what am I saying? Well, because striking is periodical, periodical contact, you can, you can divert your attention. You can focus on something else. Because grappling is perpetual contact. It calls for you to be focused to the exclusion of your surroundings. Hopefully you understand me here. That is a problem with grappling by its very nature. It calls for you to be focused on the person you're grappling with to the exclusion of your surroundings. So when you were talking about grappling, I can take you to any city. I can bring you here to where I am. People totally untrained. Let you grapple. Put a newspaper in their hand. And while you try to grapple with two people, one of them will stab you up. Hypothetic, you know, I mean, we're just talking about, you know, um, an assimilation, right? With a piece of newspaper. Most of you people that I talk to who get pissed off about what I say, about this idea of grappling as a default, right? And BJJ in particular as the ultimate martial art and what you should be doing, all you should be doing is BJJ. Most of you get upset, but you're too much of a coward to test out what I'm saying. You can test it out in your school. Give someone a newspaper, roll it up, and try to grapple with two people and see how that turns out. With just one having a newspaper. If you were trying to grapple with two people, you can lose your life. If grappling for self-defense is a default of yours, you can lose your life. But here's the issue. The reason why so many of you get upset when I say what I say about this BJJ thing, okay? The reason why, excuse me, uh, somebody's calling me, but I can't talk right now. Uh, the reason is, is this, <clears throat> is this. You have invested so much money into your BJJ. You have invested so much emotionally into believing that this is the ultimate martial art. That you do not have the emotional muscle to say, wait a minute. I got to rethink this. I should learn the best submissions, the highest percentage submissions that are generally taught at Purple Belt and Below. Find somebody to roll with, right? Work on getting up, work on escapes, and work on my striking. You will not say this, so what you keep doing is you try to bend violence to fit your BJJ rather than taking BJJ to fit the reality of violence. So I'm gonna go back and say again, my problem with this default idea of grappling is that when you are striking, it is periodical contact, periodical contact. You can divert your attention, your attention can be diverted, not a problem, as long as you step back out of range, you can do this. But when you are grappling, it is perpetual. It is perpetual contact, and therefore by its very nature, in order for you to not get choked out, in order for you to not get submitted, it demands a focus to it, a dedication to it, to that grappling, to the exclusion of everything else, and that includes your surroundings in a street environment. So that is my issue. Should you grapple? Yes. You should grapple in order to control someone if you're a bouncer or a cop you should grapple in order to get someone off you you should grapple in order to get someone down and you remain up to run to stomp them whatever get your gun out get your knife out with you should use grappling to shield yourself two people are attacking you you get one put them behind your back or put them uh, get behind his back you're holding them to shield, put in between you and the other attacker. But as a default, this is dangerous, and no one who knows about street violence would ever disagree with me. 
If anyone disagrees with me on the issue that grappling as a default should not be used as a means of self-defense, then they are wrong. Absolutely wrong. Okay? Because grappling by its very nature demands a focus, a degree of focus, to the exclusion of focusing on other things that should be more important, which is someone possibly holding a knife, carrying a bat, carrying a gun, carrying a piece, a broken bottle, whatever. It demands far too much attention for you to call it your default and your preferred method of defense. My name is Sabe Carmen Walker Sagapedia. Martial arts on social media. See you next video.